fun. What I do is dirty and it's ferocious and it's fire and fury and brimstone. It's just this place of just a grunt, heat and exertion and power. My work's pretty much born in the dark. I create work in the dark with light, shadow play, and how light moves and how it changes things and elongates and foreshortens. And the line and the form is more where I'm at. Hi, my name's Dion Horstmans. I'm an artist and I'm based in Sydney. Born in New Zealand, grew up in the Cook Islands. I left New Zealand when I was 18, 19. Dropped out of uni. I went traveling around through the Pacific, through Europe, and then down through Southeast Asia. My visa had run out in Bali. I didn't want to go back to New Zealand, so I flew to Darwin, because it was the most direct place to get to. Made my way down the East Coast, arrived in Sydney, and just fell in love with it. I've always wanted to be an artist. That's what I ever wanted to do. I've done everything, you know, abattoirs, fishing boats, laboring, doors. Cut my teeth in film and that gave me a education on how to use a massive range of different tools and techniques and finishes. You're in your own world trying to create a place for yourself in this ever-changing, evolving world of art. How I would describe my work was well, abstract geometric, it's very dynamic. It's an expression of me trying to work out where I stand with me. Favourite artists as an early kid were obviously cartoons. Now from there, as I got older, it would have been early abstract, Picasso, Brancusi, these guys, hardline artists. I've created these angular drawings with points, or sculptures with points. I'm scribing a line going through one point and through another point and through another point, so I'm doing these circular kind of motions. There's as much consideration about the line as there is in the straight pieces. My alarm goes off at 5.15, I turn my coffee machine on, I stretch and I'm, I groan and I moan and I roll and, and then at about 6 o'clock or as soon as it gets light I'll go down and have a swim. I jump into the ocean and I become part of this weightless being in this space or in this living thing that's way greater than me. The way the light refracts off the bottom of the ocean as you're looking back up, I find it really settling and very calming. I can be sore and broken and emotionally distraught. I can jump into the ocean and, you know, for those moments when I'm underwater with my eyes open looking around, I'm like, I'm, I'm close to all the gods and I'm, you know, Nirvana and all the heavens and it's amazing. It's a place where I can feel grounded. I can jump in there, I can kind of get rejuvenated and recharged and I can feel that one, I can float weightless in this kind of thing that's much greater than myself. I have this big vacuous concrete bunker that I've built walls down both sides, plywood walls, because I can't drill into the concrete all the time. And I've coloured one wall I've got the same colour as this place and the other wall is all white and it's 9.6 metres long with a big yellow warp down one end. The space is very different to this where I'm living. You know, my space is huge and it's, you know, it's sparse and it's functional. Everything's on wheels, everything moves. I know where everything is. I'm constantly cleaning. I don't like dirt and dust everywhere. Winter's the best time to produce for me. because The world of working with steel is you've got to suit up, you've got to wear a you know, long sleeve shirt, you're like a full length leather apron that weighs a ton. You've got gloves on, you've got a helmet, you've got earplugs. It's hot, sweaty, dirty work. Steel arrives, it's heavy, it's covered in grease, it's dirty. I've got to drag it into my workshop and I will grab whatever solid round bar and I'll measure and cut and I'll weld and then I'll grind it, clean that weld up. As I build out, I can't get a grinder or a hand into the finer spaces, so I clean as I work out. It is something which you know, I've created that fits the speed, that phonetic kind of madness that I roll with. 
I can do anything in there. I can make smaller pieces, bigger pieces, and I'll ch constantly be, be changing it how it feels and constantly change the artwork on the walls. And I get burnt, I get blinded, I get cut. It's very unforgiving in that sense. The material itself, it's really beautiful. You know, I can morph it together, I can join it. If I make a mistake, I can cut it and re reuse it. I put all these cellular pieces together in a random organic kind of shape. And then I was moving it from my studio out to the wall to photograph it and the sun was shining through it. And I cast this quite elongated, beautiful shadow. I was like, wow, that's amazing. I can make a three-dimensional piece, put it on my bench, shine a light through it. The shadow that's on the bench, I can scribe that or mark that out and then rebuild that from one piece I've created another piece. And I can flip that first piece around innumerable times to create different works. The 2D piece that I've now made three-dimensionally, I can do the same again. So it's this, it is an endless iteration of work. It's like a drawing, basically. I'm doing 3D drawings. I'm doing them in real time and real space. In that space, I own that space and I'm, I'm good enough and I'm constantly pushing because I'm you know, inquisitive. What if, what if, what if I do this or what if I do that? What would it look like if I did this? I'm safe to be able to feel, like, oh, I can do this, or I can push, I can explore this. No one's telling me I can't do that, or there's no boundaries, I, there's, you know, I, can, I can push, I can, I can keep going. A couple of friends and I started training together in the afternoons, a couple of nights a week. It's a very social thing, in the sense that my practice is so, such an isolating thing. I'm alone all day, I live alone, I, you know, I work alone. So it's as much about you know, the community or that group of guys and the chat and the, you know, the banter, as much about the physicality. It's family, people you can look out for. What I've created is a sanctuary for myself, not something that, which is driven by money. A lot of the objects, they make my life richer. I feel my work should be moved. I don't think anything should be have a place and that's it. It's a, a living thing. It comes from a place of passion and exploration, and that's how it should be treated.